of the things that um, you'll see a lot of times advertised are binoculars that have these um, special mirrored coatings on the objective lenses. Um, a real common one are the uh, ruby coated lenses. And um, what they'll look like is just a bright mirror red finish on that objective lens. Um, now, uh, they'll often advertise that as um, providing some sort of benefit um, either with light transmission or uh, resolution or something like that. Um, when the reality is is that um, with those lenses it's, it's exactly the opposite and a real easy way to see why um, ruby coated lenses aren't helping you at all is, is to just look at how that bright red finish reflects back a lot of red light. Well if it's reflecting back a lot of red light it means that there's a lot of red light that's not getting transmitted through that binocular. So what that'll actually do is tint that binocular to a real bluish green hue when you're viewing through it, which kind of gives everything a colder look and also reduces your light transmission so images aren't going to be as bright and that's critical in lower light conditions um, when you're looking for those animals. You want to have the maximum light transmission possible. So I'd steer clear of any kind of lens that's got a mirrored finish like those ruby coated lenses or um, anything similar to that. And there are a lot of other misconceptions out there too that, that are worth touching on and, and some of those revolve around uh, formulas guys use to calculate brightness in a binocular. We see a lot that uh, people like to compare binoculars using the formulas for twilight factor and brightness factor and it's really important to understand that those formulas are basically just working with combinations of the objective lens diameter and the magnification and the, and the real problem for the consumer out there is they, they really don't help you out at all. Those, those formulas simply give you a very, very basic calculation of brightness. The key thing that they leave out is any sort of adjustment for quality, and that's quality of glass and quality of coatings, assembly tolerances, lots of different things. Those have a tremendous effect on brightness, so when you're out there and you're trying to compare binoculars for, for low light performance, those formulas just don't help you out. It's just not something that's going to be very useful to you at all in the field. So it's real important um, to, to really just steer clear of those numbers. Um, exit pupil is, is probably the most important number you can look at without looking through the binocular. Um, but ultimately, looking through the binoculars and comparing them side by side it is the best way to see which ones have better brightness, which ones have better coatings, um, and that type of thing. Tied to that same line of thought is, you know, we, we see many times someone will look at a binocular, and that binocular may have a big objective lens, maybe a 50 or a 56 millimeter objective lens, and people many times falsely assume that that binocular with that big lens is, is brighter than any binocular that's smaller than that is, and, and that's definitely not the case. It's, it's, a, you know, it's a great place to think about buying yourself quality, because if you, you, can, you can go out and you can buy a binocular that has better glass and better coatings, and that binocular may very well outperform that larger binocular in low light. It may give you a brighter, sharper image, and not only that, but it's a smaller and lighter and easier binocular to carry around. So don't make the mistake of assuming you know that uh, bigger is better and bigger is brighter. It's not always the case out there. All right, another uh, feature that oftentimes you'll see in binoculars are binoculars called autofocus or focus free. Really, this is mostly a gimmick. Um, what the manufacturers have done is essentially just remove the focus from the binocular. There isn't anything um, special. Um, about that binocular that um, makes it better than one with a focus wheel on it. Um, there's nothing internally in the binocular that it's doing automatically to focus. Um, what, what they're doing is they're taking uh, advantage of an optical um, property where the further you focus out, the, the um, wider your depth of field is. And so essentially what they've done is just fix that focus at a point um, such that um, you can uh, see most of what you're looking at. But once you get in closer, say within maybe 10 yards, 15 yards, nothing's going to be in focus. Uh, furthermore, um, what the autofocus binoculars are counting on is that um, the muscles in your eyes are going to um, contract um, and, and reshape slightly that uh, the, the lens of your eye to... Um, 
to use your own body to compensate for the difference in focus. And what that does is over long periods of viewing, you're going to find that you're going to have a lot of eye fatigue because it's, it's your, the muscles in your eye that are using um, their own energy to uh, account for that uh, fixed focus. So it's really better off to just have a, a focus wheel where you can let that do the, the work of focusing and not your eyes. You'll be more comfortable viewing for longer periods of time. Yeah, that's that's great advice, Sam. And particularly, again, touching on out west here where guys can spend hours and hours and hours a day glassing. If you're working with one of these focus-free type binos, you know, if you're out and you're trying to glass four, five, six hours a day with a binocular like that, you, your eyes are going to be beat. You you know, you'll, you'll go about one afternoon and that'll be the end of it. You, you can't keep that up with those, so steer clear of them. For anyone that's interested in learning a little more about these technical details in optics and some of the, the various features, specifications, uh, numbers used for comparison, uh, we at Vortex publish a really nice little brochure here called All About Optics. Very quick and easy to read. Tons of useful information packed in there. Um, we'd be happy to send it to anyone that's interested in learning a little bit more. You can uh, reach us at uh, www.vortexoptics.com or you can give us a call at 800-426-0048 and again we'd be happy to send you out one of these.